Hello. In today's topic, we are going to talk about one of the important components of VPC, which is IP addresses. In our previous video, we have given an introduction on what is VPC. So now in our forthcoming videos, we'll be discussing about individual components of VPC. In today's topic, we'll be talking about IP address. So what is an IP address? IP address is nothing but logical numerical label assigned to each device in a network. Now every device in a network has an IP address. It could be a printer, your mobile phone, your laptop, your EC2 instance, your instance in which your database is running. Every, every, every device is associated with an IP addresses. Now in AWS or in cloud, there are three main types of IP addresses. One is the private IP address, public IP address, and elastic IP address. Let us first see what is private IP address. Private IP address are mainly used for internal communication within the VPC. So these devices cannot be accessed through internet and cannot be accessed from the outside world. These are mainly used for internal communication. Like one instance can talk to another instance, but I cannot access this instance using the IP address through my browser or internet. So mainly it is used for internal uh, inter VPC communication. Now there are three ranges of IP addresses in, in terms of private. So one is the first IP address which we are seeing is 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 to 10.255 range. Another one is 172.16.x.x and the third range is 192.168.x.x. So we will see what is this x.x. In this slide you will be seeing that is 0 to 0 till it goes to 255 or 255 i'm just referring this as x we will be talking about this in detail now next type of ip address is the public ip address public ip address is basically assigned to an ec2 instance when you want that to be accessed over the internet so these ip addresses are basically non static in nature so when i say non static in nature when you assign an I, when you spin up an EC2 instance, it gets assigned to an IP address that is called public IP address. Now this IP address is very non-static in nature. Like for example, if I stop the instance and I start it again, the public IP address will change. It will not remain the same every time. So the problem here is when I assign this public IP address to an instance and then I give this IP address to the customers, tomorrow for some reason if I have to turn off the EC2 instance for some patching and I then bring it up, the IP address will change. So for that nature, we have something called elastic IP addresses. Elastic IP address is same as public IP address, but it's only difference is it is static in nature. Now, when I assign a particular elastic IP address to my EC2 instance, No matter how many times I turn off and turn on the instance, the IP address of that particular EC2 instance will not change. So there are some certain limitations in elastic IP address. Like for example, you can have only up to five elastic IP addresses in, uh, for one region and elastic IP addresses are not free. Like if you create an elastic IP address and if I don't use it, I will be charged or if I assign an elastic IP address to my EC2 instance and I move the state of the EC2 instance from stop that is the elastic IP address is idle then still I will be charged. As far as I assign my elastic IP address to an EC2 instance and the EC2 instance is running then I won't be charged. So these are some of the limitations of elastic IP addresses. We have already seen an in-depth video of elastic IP addresses I will put the link of that video in the description. I urge you to please go through that video to understand what is elastic IP address, public IP address, and how do we use that in our AWS account. Now AWS has launched a new type of IP address called bring your own IP address. These are basically used when you want to move your infrastructure from on-prem to the AWS cloud. Now say for example, you have some of your instances running in on-prem on a particular IP address. And if you want to move your infrastructure to cloud, then obviously the, all the IP addresses will change. But if you don't want that to happen, then you can bring all those IP addresses to the AWS cloud and then you can assign those IP addresses to the new EC2 instances so that your customer will not know that you have 
actually move your infrastructure from on-prem to cloud. It will still be accessing to the same IP addresses. Now that we have seen what are all the IP addresses, next thing we are going to see is called CIDR block. Now CIDR block is called classless inter-domain routing. This is a way of allocating IP addresses more flexibly over nature of bits used for networking part. It allows you to granular way of assigning blocks of address to your organization. So whenever I create a VPC, I need to assign a CIDR block to the VPC or the subnet. And then when I create any resources within the subnet, it will pick the IP address within the range which I specify for that particular subnet. So how do I specify the range? It is through the CIDR block. So we will understand how the CIDR notation works. Now there are two types of IP addresses. One is IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 is in 32-bit address which ends with slash uh, 62. If you see the below example, we have something on 172.31.0.0 slash 16. We will see what this means. So whenever you say slash 16, it means that the first 8 bit is fixed. So here 172.31 is fixed and the remaining bits are assigned to the particular host. So that can vary, right? So this IPv4 addresses in AWS is provided by RF C1918. So this is a standard which provides the IPv4 addresses. So as we have seen earlier, the private addresses comes from the three range of uh, IP addresses and the public IP addresses comes from a separate pool. Now, say for example, you have an IP address called 192.168.0.5. Now these are called octets, right? So there are Typically, IPv4 is a 32-bit and each bit is an octet. So there are basically four octets. So first octet is 192, second octet is 168, third octet is 0, and fourth octet is 5. Now each octet is basically 8 bits. So here you can see the binary representation. This is the 8-bit representation of 192. This is the 8-bit representation of 168. This is the binary representation of 0. And this is the binary representation of 5. So this is how your each uh, IP addresses is being converted into its corresponding binary format. Now let us understand a bit more. Let us understand you, as we discussed, your IP address is divided into four octets. So let us understand how we divide this. Say for example, you have an IP address in the range of 192.168.0.0 slash 16. So let us, let us break, break this down one by one. So the first one is the first octet. The 168 is the second octet. 0 is the third octet. And 0 is the fourth octet. Now here we have written down the binary representation of 192. So this can be 11000000. Similarly, we have written binary representation of each octets below. Now, each octet, as we have discussed, is 2 to the power 8. So, your entire IPv4 address, let me go to my previous site, as we have discussed, it is 32 bit. IPv4 is a 32 bit address. So, since there are uh, each octet is of 8 bits, you have 2 to the power 8. 2 to the power 8, 2 to the power 8, 2 to the power 8, it sums up to 2 to the power 32. It's a 32-bit IP address. Now, since it is 32-bit IP address on the whole, it is further divided into each octet and each octet is 2 to the power 8. All right, so when I say slash 16, that means the first 8 bits are assigned to the network. So what is the first 8 bit? This one and this one which means 192 and 168 is assigned to the network which will not change and then the remaining bits so out of 32 if i do 32 minus 16 it is 16 right so the remaining 16 bits is assigned to the host so let me reiterate when i say 192.168.0.0 slash 16 this is how you write a cider notation so slash 16 means the first 16 bits are fixed which means they are assigned to the network, which will not change. And the remaining 16 bits are assigned to the host, which can variable. So the first 16 bits in our IP address is nothing but 192.168. These are the first 16 bits. This will not change. 
and the variables which can change is the last 16 bits which is 0 and 0 so what could be, what will be the range of the ip address so the total range of ip address for this particular subnet is 192.168 as we discussed this will not change this is fixed dot zero dot zero from this range to 192.168.255.255 now why 255 because we said each octet is 2 to the power 8 and 2 to the power 8 is nothing but 256 even though 2 to the power 8 is 256 we assign 258 because one bit will be assigned to internal aws ip address so we will just uh, we, we can't use that but we can't use the entire range of ip address so we will be able to use only 255 out of 256 so that is why the range of ip address which will be assigned to this particular subnet will be from 192.168.0.0 192.168.255.255 now say for example instead of slash 16 if i give slash 8 so how will you calculate now similarly for each bit the first 8 bit is assigned to the network and the last 3 bits are assigned to the host now there's a small mistake here so let me change this so this is assigned to the host and this is also wrong it is not assigned to the network this is also assigned to the host right so the first eight bits which is nothing but 192 is static which will be fixed that will be assigned to the network and the remaining 24 bits which is second octet third octet and fourth octet is variable so what will be the range of this so the 192 will not change so the range will be from 192 to 192 and the remaining 24 octets will go from 0 to 255 so let's not forget each octet is 2 to the power 8 so 2 to the power 8 in the sense you have 256 values so it will go from 0 to 255 all right so let us see one more example let us say I have something an IP address range is 192.168.100.0 slash 22. So previously it was all in the multiples of 8. So you are ab easily able to split the octets. But here this is not in the multiples of 8. So how will this be? So as, as we said the first 22 bits will be assigned to the network. So the what is the first 22 bit 192 of course this comes in the this is the first 8 bits second 8 bits obviously this will also be assigned to the network and the third bit only the 20 only 2 plus 2 16 16 plus 6 so out of 8 out of this 8 bit only 6 bits will be assigned to the network and remaining 2 bits will be assigned to the host so and in the fourth octet the entire octet will be assigned to the host so this will be from the range of 0 to 255 this will not change as such so if you see the ranges 192.168 and here 192.168 this does not change this remains static because this is the first 16 bit of your ip address this will not change and even if you see the last octet this varies fully so 0 to 255 and then if you see the last octet it ranges fully from 0 to 255 but the third octet it it is 100 and here it can go only up to 103 because six bits are static and only two is dynamic so it can go only from 100 to 103 not beyond that the next range of IP address is IPv6. Now IPv6 is up to 128 bit and in AWS the IPv6 is fixed to slash 56. It cannot go beyond 56. The address is allocated automatically from the pool of IPv6 address and they are given by Amazon Global Unicast address. So mostly we will be using IPv4 address but since the number of devices are increasing rapidly in today's world. so ipv4 addresses are not enough so that's why we use ipv6 address especially in today's world when we are using lot of 
IoT devices, each device will have an IP address assigned to it. So it is not possible to assign an IP address to all the devices within the IPv4 range. So that is why we came up with something called IPv6 addresses. I hope you are now clear with how the IP addresses and CIDR notation works in AWS. If you have any doubts or, and if you want me to talk on any other subject on AWS, please comment down. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Thank you so much.